thermal. <laughs> thermal imaging. Is it just for the bug out guys? Is it just for the military? Or can a regular hunter or regular civilian find use for something of this caliber? Today we're gonna to go through the RH-25 from uh, Infrared Outdoor, kind of break it down to its parts, talk about its specs and features, and just talk about thermal in general. What are your options? Where can you use it? And what is it good for? So today we're primarily going to be talking about a specific unit uh, from Infrared Outdoors called the RH-25. Uh, this is one of their hybrid units, hence the H in the name. Uh, as you can see, you can use it on a helmet. You can obviously use it in handheld mode. And what we're mainly going to be focusing on is its ability to mount to a rifle. When it comes to eye, you know, infrared or, or thermal imaging, uh, I think a lot of the misconceptions and a lot of the hesitation comes from purely cost standpoints. We're used to seeing things upwards of $20,000 uh, for to get into you know any type of thermal imaging, but lately, uh, because of overseas imports, uh, things are getting a lot more reasonable. And if you are looking to get into thermal in general, having something that can do more than one thing, I think is a really useful thing to have. And it's just a lot of added value to the product. So instead of just using a dedicated rifle scope or just a dedicated monocular, you can purchase something like the RH-25 and get the boast of, uh, get the best of all of the worlds uh, that you could be using thermal imaging for. All right, so first we're just gonna go over generics of thermal, a very, very quick down and dirty explanation of what thermal is and some of the offerings out there. So thermal imaging uh, may be obvious to some people, but maybe not is a device that can see the uh, infrared spectrum of, of wavelengths or of light rays. Uh, a lot of thermal that you're going to see nowadays operates within the 8 to 12 uh, micron area, which is kind of gibberish, but it doesn't really change between all of the units out there, the commercial units uh, specifically. So if you're looking at specs like that, that range isn't really going to change. What you are going to be looking for when deciding to purchase a, a thermal unit is going to be the uh, the resolution of the sensor itself, screen resolution, and then its thermal sensitivity. So screen resolution and thermal resolution are going to be measured in uh, you know pixel density, just like TVs, everything else like that. The two main resolutions is going to be 384 and 640, which the RH25 uh, is a 640 unit. Obviously, 640 is going to be a higher resolution. You're going to get a clearer image as opposed to the 384, which you're going to get a lower resolution image. Uh, next is thermal sensitivity, which is measured in millikelvins, which again, probably doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people, but the thermal sensitivity of this is less than 50 millikelvins, which equates to less than a tenth of a degree Fahrenheit. So extremely, extremely sensitive units the more sensitivity you have in a unit, the more differentiation you're gonna get in the image between different uh, color temperatures. So if you're operating in a, uh, you know, in a scenario that's extremely cold across the entirety of the, what you're viewing, uh, it's very important to have extremely high thermal sensitivity so you can differentiate between something that is, I mean, literally a five degree surface temperature or a 5.1 degree surface temperature. You're actually gonna see differences in color in those two things, which is super important. It's not just resolution you're looking for. So another huge and really cool thing uh, about the RH-25 is it has onboard video and photo storage. So you do not need to be connected to an outboard device or anything like that to capture photo and video. And it will hold on the device up to 64 gigabytes of, of media. So if you are wanting to you know, film what you're doing in the field, you don't have to have something that is actually capturing that for you. You can do it straight on the device, which is pretty insane for something of this size. Its detection range is about 1,375 yards. That is on paper. I have definitely heard, and you can you can Google it all you want, of people making good identifications at farther distances. Uh, but for a unit of this size, again, is a, is a massive, massive detection range. And you're gonna hear me say that a lot, a unit of this size, which is very important. It's very stowable, uh, very easy to throw in a pack. It's very lightweight. 
uh, and it still has all the capabilities, most of the capabilities of a lot of larger units. So the RH-25 does also come equipped with pretty much uh, you know, all of the features every other thermal device has out there right now. Your four main uh, color temperatures, white hot, black hot, red hot, and color. Uh, it also has a very, very easy to use user interface. You can change everything from your color temperatures to your, uh, your brightness of the screen. You can turn on and off the reticle. You can do pretty much anything. And it also does have a smart sensor that when it is mounted in the upward position, it will automatically switch to clip-on mode, and then when it is flipped upside down, it assumes you have it mounted to a helmet, and it will uh, switch to the viewfinder mode. So, with a couple different accessories uh, that you can purchase, which is uh, the pigtail adapter, uh, this is these are all eye ray or infrared accessories, uh, by the way. So, this is the pigtail adapter. As you can see, it has your dovetail, which is just a normal Wilcox mount or knockoffs or whatever dovetail. That's gonna be your helmet mount uh, integration, and then your Picatinny, hence Picktail. Uh, the Picatinny is for this guy right here, which is the ADM uh, QR adapter. All of this will be in the description of the video, links to this stuff. But it is, uh, it is a dual female Picatinny that can mount to the front rail of a rifle, and then also, acts as the attachment point for the RH-25 in front of the rifle scope. As you can see on this one, it's not perfectly aligned, but what I've found out is that is not, that's not extremely necessary. When you're using this in front of a rifle scope, you're mainly going to be using either no magnification or very low magnification rifle scopes. Uh, there's, you're not gonna get above, uh, in my opinion, you're not gonna be above four maybe five power on this. It starts to pixelate just a little bit. So your three to 18s and things like that are gonna be usable at their very, very low end. But in my opinion, this thing shines with either a one to six, one to eight or one to 10 uh, type of rifle scope. So whatever you need to do to get it within you know, that range, you're always gonna magnify slightly. So if you are slightly off center, you're gonna magnify into the image and it's going to make those bevels or, uh, disappear on that one. I have it on a riser right now because I do have this on a uh, Unity high mount, which is like 2.09 inches, way higher than most LPVO mounts out there. Uh, so it's just gonna kind of depend on your setup. I can guarantee you there is a riser mount system out there that can make your rifle scope work with your RH-25. All right, so right now, we're gonna do a little experiment. Uh, the one question I have had is uh, point of impact change with using a system like this. Since this is not a direct clip-on unit, uh, the point of impact change should be mitigated slightly, but since you are looking at a screen and not actually looking at your target, uh, the, you know, the difference in what the actual unit is looking at and what your reticle is looking at could be slightly different. So we're gonna test to see if there's point of impact change, if so, how much? Uh, we're gonna do three shots on target with the with no RH-25, and then we're just gonna throw it on. We're gonna do three shots on target with the RH-25. So let's get going. All right, so first things first, we're gonna do three shots with no RH-25. Make sure all this is 5.56. Five, then we're gonna do three shots with the RH-25. So, first things first, all right, we're going hot. We'll do three rounds. Pretty dang good if you ask me. Mm -hmm. All right, now go ahead and attach our RH25. How many times can I say RH25 in one video? A couple more. A couple more, I think. There it goes. All right. We got at least three rounds in there. Yep. 
Okay. All right. Go ahead, head down range, check it out. This isn't the best scenario for doing a thermal rifle scope. Right. I'm looking at something really faded. These two right here, those two bottom ones were the, they're, were, were oh, the hell thermal yeah. and then that one. Okay, perfect. All right, so ignore it. Ignore it, we're gonna call that one human error. Uh, there is definitely something to talk about here. We're using a non-thermal target. They actually do exist. Uh, you can get targets with little center dots that do emit heat. Uh, they use like hand warmer type stuff. Uh, obviously those would be better in this scenario. The, the, the signature that I'm trying to look at is pretty dang faint. So that and I'm only human. I can pull shots every once in a while. This is five rounds, three of which obviously don't have the RH25 mounted and two of which do. I'm assuming that one was the one with the RH25 mounted, but take that outlier out. That is extremely impressive in my mind. Uh, every, pretty much every clip on unit out there is going to advertise some sort of point of impact shift due to the fact that you are still looking at a screen and the weight hanging off the end of the rifle scope, all of that is going to equal some sort of point of impact change. Uh, it's all measured at 100 yards, not this distance, but I can, I can bet my bottom dollar that that is not going to equal any impact change, even at 100 yards. So I think that's pretty dang impressive with how easy that RH is to mount and how quick it is. Using this over a clip-on, in my mind, is kind of a no-brainer. And again, with a clip-on, you're only getting one type of unit. You're only getting one functionality out of it. It is just a clip-on unit, and other times, a handheld unit also. But it has no option to mount to a helmet. Which, if you are gonna be using you know, this thermal for, I mean, pretty much anything, whether it be you know, uh, uh, tactical operations, uh, hunting, or just general use, I can guarantee you, your life is going to be more comfortable with a helmet on. Uh, if you are going to be hunting for six hours at night for, you know, hogs in Texas, how many of you are going to want to walk around like this for six hours or wear a nice comfortable helmet with a nice, you know, uh, strap system and everything's, you know, connected there and it's comfortable for long periods of time. So having something that is capable of doing that, in my opinion, is very important if you do intend on using this stuff, which if you're going to spend the money on it, I would assume you do intend on using it. So uh, we'll go back, we'll talk about just a couple other things when it comes to thermal in general, but I think the proof is in the pudding there. That is a, uh, that is a pretty impressive uh, showing there from the RH25. All right, so when it comes to thermal, there's lots of things to consider. Uh, you know, purchasing a unit is something, is, you know, obviously the, the first thing you wanna think about, do you, want to use this stuff? Do you have a reason to use this stuff? I mean, in my opinion, thermal imaging is a very, very fun tool to have. Uh, these things aren't toys. They're obviously meant for very serious use, but they are extremely fun to use. This is stuff that if you, you go back a hundred years and show this to somebody, they'd burn you at the stake for being a witch. I mean, this technology is, is pretty mind blowing and having it available to us, at these price points is what is making things just even more fun nowadays. You don't have to spend $18,000 just for a single clip-on unit anymore. You can get into some pre pretty serious high-end stuff for a much more affordable price. Uh, the next thing you're gonna wanna consider is just the legality in your area. Um, us here in Arizona, unfortunately, it is uh, completely illegal for use in any hunting scenarios, uh, which does suck but there's tons of states out there that allow you to use it in different scenarios. There's even some states that allow you to use it for big game hunting. Um, I am not gonna get into the nitty gritty of all of those states and all the legalities because it's a little convoluted. I would definitely, 
you know, if you are going to purchase this, uh, make sure you look up your local laws, call your game and fish, talk to them about it if you have any questions. Uh, but every single state is going to be a little bit different, whether it's completely illegal, it's illegal for use for uh, coyotes and fur bearing, uh, certain times of year, certain seasons. So they, everything can vary. So just make sure that you're, you're looking that up and you're as legal, you know, not as legal as possible. You are legal when you are using it. Uh, that's a, it's an important thing, but just enjoying it is legal everywhere. This is, there's not a single restriction out there on whether or not you can own thermal. Uh, and then there are obviously some states that are going to restrict shooting at night, but most states don't restrict that. This is fun stuff to use. Uh, I mean, yeah, we use a lot of the stuff that we own, but let's be honest, a lot of you have stuff in your safe, optics, rifle scopes, rifles in general, that you haven't used in a very long time. Uh, this is the, this is really fun stuff. It's, it's cool to get into and it's a fun little hobby. And then if you wanna take a trip to Idaho one day and you know go shoot a bunch of coyotes at night, you have that option. So again, if you have any questions, like always, please feel free to give us a call at 1-800-291-8065, or you can email us or check out our website at outdoorsmans.com. It makes, it makes using that stuff so damn comfortable. Really? It's ridiculous. I mean, you can walk around for hours and hours. What's the helmet weigh? This? Yeah. This is just a bump helmet. This weighs like maybe a pound and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not ballistic. ballistic helmets range from like pound and a half to like 3.7, yeah. almost four pounds in yeah. some of them. And then like the military stuff is, yeah. is like six pounds. Yeah, it's yeah. massive. But like high cut helmets like this are pretty light. This is a Team Wendy LTP. It's like a super, super popular bump helmet that everybody yeah. uses. This was like 300 bucks. Yeah. I mean, for the entire thing. If you really want to go ballistic, you can go down to like, I think like 470. Yeah. That can take basically any handgun cartridge. It's it's ready for any handgun cartridge. Anything rifle is going to be up into like the 1000 to $1,500 range yeah. for any rifles. But uh, they rate the stuff by, they rate the helmets a lot by like feet per second. That doesn't include, that price doesn't include the muffs though, right? No. Yeah. These are about 280 though. And yeah. pretty widely considered to be... I mean, very close to Peltors. Yeah. So, like, obviously don't have any comms built yeah. in, but you can always run an auxiliary cable to these. You can hear your comms and then just use an external mic yeah. for that if you want to. And that's another thing is, like, you know, everybody talks about, you know, comms, like, oh, that's only for, you're such a tool, like, you know, putting that stuff on. But realistically, if you're hunting with four or five guys. Oh, yeah. And you're wearing this all day long? Yeah, they're, they're uh, you know, I can hear with them. They have microphones right. in them. But if you're 200 yards away yeah. and you're both in, like, shooting positions, they're going to be shooting into a field, how nice it would be to just yeah. you know, chime into a radio and be yeah. able to talk to each other and not have to take your pro off. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's there's it's cool a, stuff. And, legit. you know, then, obviously, LARPing and looking cool and yeah. feeling cool yeah. is fun, too. Yeah. Looking cool is important. Yeah. It wants to look like a tool. Like a tool. Shoot with a helmet. All right.